So hello everybody, it is Friday, so it's time for another Dax Friday, a new Dax function every Friday. In today's Dax Fridays, I am going to show you how to get the results of a measure and put it into a slicer so you can slice by it. I've been wanting to do this for the longest time, so I figured out and I'm going to show you. Let's get started. Okay guys, I showed this trick on the Power BI user group for Austin, Texas in the US on Wednesday. So I am going to show you now because I think it's a really cool trick. Uh, this is what we want to do. This is what I wanted to do. I created a report for that user group meeting uh, that looks like this. So this is the um, shared bike services in Austin, Texas. And I wanted to know, okay, where is the best place and time to grab a bike in Austin, Texas. The data set is publicly shared by Google. I have a video on that. So you can go and grab it. And what I wanted to do, you know, when you start plotting the things, you can see here that these are all the bike shares for the period selected. And it's just a big mess of plot. For me, it doesn't say anything. I always need to segment things in order to see something. So I wanted to categorize the rides and then filter by it. And you can see that on this version. So if a ride, if a station, this is a bike station, has less than a thousand rides, I want to see it in green. If it has less than uh, 10,000, orange, red is 50,000, and this is black is over 50,000, okay? So what I want to be able to do is when I click on green, a filter is green, when I click on orange, it filters orange and red, filters red, right? So we can actually see where the hotspots are. So this is how you do it. It's actually very easy once you wrap your head around what you need to do. So first of all, we need to create a separate table. You're going to see here that this table is not connected to anything anywhere. So you need to create a separate table that contains those status, so green, orange, red, and black. And each status has assigned a number that we're going to use later. So green has a status ID or I call it limit one, orange two, red three, black four. So first thing that we need to do, you need to create a separate table just because the results of the measure you cannot put that in a slicer. You probably know that already. So you need to have a separate table that has the actual values in there. So I have them here. I am going to put it as a slicer and then I'm going to put it as a horizontal. And then let's put it like that for now. You see? So now you have black, green, obviously nothing is going to happen now because this slicer doesn't trigger anything. But if I click on green, the value that gets selected on the table is limit one. You see it here. So click on green, then the value limit will be one if I click on orange two. And we can use that. So if I go here now and create a new measure, and I'm going to call it number of trips. So first of all, I'm going to create a variable for the trips. So we're going to create a variable, trips and trips. Let me show you, I should have shown you this first. Uh, trips by a slicer. It's going to give me an error, but I don't worry about that. So our trips table, it basically contains each and every trip taken. You see one row, one trip, and you have the start time, start station and time and station. Okay. So I already have a measure that counts the number of rows on the trips table, which eventually means that it counts the number of trips on the trips table. So we know how many trips. So if we go again to our measure, it disappeared. Okay, let's write it again. Trips by slicer. And we'll put the variable in there. And we're going to again create the variable because we're going to use that trip measure many, many times. So we don't want to recalculate it. So it is in there. Return. 
And now it's, this is where the magic happens. We say if has one value for the uh, what is it called? The status status. So if the state the status is this black, green, orange, and red, the, the text. So we say if somebody has clicked on this, it means that it has one value. If nobody click on it, it will have all four values. But if somebody clicks on it, it has one value. So if it has one value, then switch true. Switch true basically means just it's an if condition, but it says once you check it, if it is correct, don't check it again. And then we go values, and then we go to uh, the limit. So we say, if somebody press on the slicer and the limit value is one, that means if somebody press on the button here and it press on green, because the limit was one, if you remember, and trips is less than a thousand, because we said green is all the trips that are le less than a thousand, then trips. I'll, let me show you what it, it will make sense, I swear. So trips, I'm going to now go to the map. I'm going to change that to, to see that it already does it. And then I'm going to show you, you need to see this. I think it's so much easier to see. So I'm going to put it in here. So you see, if we press on green, only the stations that had trips less than a thousand rides will show. And then you can see that. If I unclick it, not going to show anything because we haven't said what to do. If you know, we, because we haven't specified what to do if nothing is clicked, it just shows blanks by default. So again, it will press green. Look at that, beautiful. Now let's do the, another one. Okay, so comma values limit equal to, which basically means if you press on the button orange, then and trips is bigger bigger than a thousand and trips is smaller than 10,000 than trips. So give me the values of the trips on that uh, specific range. And these are the greens and this is the orange. And as you see, it's working perfectly. Uh, you don't need to see me watch write the rest. So I am going to just copy it. So for the, this is for the red, which is value three and then between 10,000 and 50,000. And this is for the black. And this is bigger than 50,000. Now, if nothing is selected on the slicer, I want you to give me all the trips. Okay, so if you don't put this, it will return blank. We don't want that. So go in there. Um, so now black, green, orange. Now it is working beautiful, but you want to see it. I need to see it. <laughs> so we need to conditional formatting. Fortunately, there is conditional formatting on the map. So we can actually do that. If we go to data colors, and we do the formatting here. So we go by rules and here we're going to get trips by slicer. And then here we do new rule. We're going to have four rules. And now we do the colors, green, orange, red and black. Okay. So orange, green, black and red. And then if I don't click anything, voila, how beautiful is this? I think it's actually very cool. Now suddenly you can start to see some patterns. You can see, for example, up there, the black is the university. So if you're trying to catch a, a 
ride at the university mm, unless they have a lot of bike stations which they could we haven't looked at that variable yet you might have a hard time green places is the place where you have biggest chances again it depends on how many bikes they have available in those places you never know but yeah i think it is a pretty cool thing to segment things using of the results of a measure so hopefully this is useful and you can create beautiful visualizations with it i will see you again on monday and maybe i will do this entire report a video for how i created these um, in a future video so just let me know if you would like to see that and, and as soon as i have the time I'll, I'll fix it i still owe you the football one i haven't forgot it's just time sorry so anyway i'm going to stop talking i'll see you again on monday as always thank you enjoy your weekend and bye bye